The story begins with what seems like an ordinary hotel staff going about their routine, but they're actually undercover agents from a secret organization called The Union. Their mission is to retrieve a briefcase containing highly classified information. Outside, the mission leader Roxanne Hall provides guidance over a voice call. The team storms the target's room, captures the man holding the intel, and things appear under control until their getaway van suddenly explodes, throwing their plan into chaos. With the operation falling apart, team leader Nick Faraday urgently tries to get his agents out. But just when they think it can't get any worse, a sniper starts taking them down one by one. Roxanne can only watch helplessly as Nick and the captive are taken out, ending the mission in a complete disaster. The story then shifts to Mike McKenna who wakes up after spending the night with a woman who used to be his seventh grade teacher, a pretty awkward situation. He heads over to his mom's place, where she finds out about his night and brings up his friend's wedding in two weeks. Later, Mike heads to work, starting his car by hot-wiring it with a screwdriver. He's a construction worker and often works on high-rise buildings. Later that night, Mike is hanging out with friends at a bar when Roxanne unexpectedly shows up. After her last mission went south, she's now determined to recruit Mike for a new one. She follows him into the bar, and it turns out they already know each other from high school, where Mike had a huge crush on her. Roxanne persuades him to join her on her motorcycle, and they ride off to catch up. During their chat, Mike confesses he was in love with her, but felt abandoned when she left. He even plays a song on his phone that brings back memories, and they share a hug. But just as things get sentimental, Roxanne surprises him by injecting him with a tranquilizer, knocking him out. Her team then takes him to their headquarters in London. When Mike wakes up in London, Roxanne casually admits she knocked him out and brought him there. Groggy, Mike's biggest worry, is getting to work before he's fired. As he steps outside the upscale hotel, he meets Tom Brennan, the head of the organization, who hands him the keys to a Range Rover for him to use, a nice perk. Mike heads out for breakfast, but driving on the opposite side of the road almost leads to a few accidents. Over breakfast, Mike, curious about why they chose him, learns more about the union. They don't recruit just experts or elite agents. Instead, they seek out ordinary people like Mike who blend in easily. The union values street smarts over book smarts. Their aim is to build a covert team of adaptable, working-class people who stay under the radar. While Mike is still absorbing this, Roxanne reveals intel on a former CIA agent who went rogue with classified data. Their mission is to track him down and recover the intel. Mike is given a full tour of the Union's headquarters, where all their covert operations are run. In the elevator, Roxanne briefs him on Julie Quinn, an information broker selling classified data on London's black market. Brennan, the Union's boss, explains that in two weeks, highly sensitive information is set to be auctioned off. Mike's role is vital here. The data includes identities of every military, police, and intelligence agent worldwide, and they can't afford for it to fall into the wrong hands, especially terrorists. Mike then undergoes rigorous training with the Union, including combat, shooting, advanced driving, stealth tactics, and building trust with teammates. One exercise even involves him running across rooftops blindfolded, relying solely on Roxanne's voice for guidance. After two intense weeks, Mike finally meets the Union's standards and is cleared for his first mission. For his first assignment, Mike's goal is to secure a device containing the critical information in exchange for $5 million in cash. This is a blind auction where each bidder has a secure, encrypted device to place bids remotely. With the cash and a verified bank account, Mike is ready for the deal. Roxanne and the team keep close surveillance from a distance, prepared to jump in if anything goes wrong. As Mike approaches the meeting point, a separate informant leads him off track, alerting the Union that they're not the only ones hunting this intel. With time running out, Roxanne and the team race to catch up with Mike, hoping to avoid a total disaster. Amidst the confusion, Mike somehow ends up in a bar where he retrieves a phone containing the critical data and hands over cash to a towering figure likely connected to the source of the intel. But as soon as Mike steps outside, he's ambushed by men trying to kill him and steal the data. Roxanne intervenes, guns blazing, and chaos erupts. With bullets flying, Mike takes off, 
dashing into a building where a live performance is underway. He sneaks outside, only to be met by two motorcyclists aiming to take him out. Just when all seems lost, a Union truck barrels in, knocking the bikers out cold. Mike's troubles don't end there. He soon encounters a fierce Russian martial artist, and during their fight, his phone with the valuable data slips into the water. Just as she's about to choke him out, Roxanne arrives just in time, knocking her down with one swift blow. They escape in a garbage truck, where two other Union members are waiting. Back at their base, Mike and Roxanne discover the phone is ruined. The data chip inside is as useless as soggy toast, leaving them with an expensive paper rate. Determined to recover the data, Roxanne and Brennan decide to shop for a replacement phone, this time from other groups hunting the same intel. They learn that five countries, including North Korea, Syria, Iran, and China, are all vying for it. The team plans a stealthy nighttime mission to infiltrate the Korean group's hideouts. During a mission, Mike captures a phone from a suspect on the run. But when they return to their van, they find their IT specialist, Athena, murdered with a photo of their base hidden in her clothes, signaling their workplace has been compromised. As Roxanne tries to warn Brennan, an explosion strikes their base, making them believe everyone there, including Brennan, is dead. Roxanne and Mike retreat to a hotel to regroup and plan their next steps. The next day, Brennan calls Roxanne, revealing he survived and urgently reminds them they need to act fast in the upcoming auction. The FBI is pressuring them to retrieve the information from the auction or risk the end of the organization. Brennan assigns them a mission to buy time. At the auction venue, Mike and Roxanne spot Julie Quinn, the information broker, in charge. They manage to pressure her into handing over the briefcase. But just as they're about to leave, they're surprised by Nick Faraday, who somehow survived his last ordeal. Nick reveals that Brennan is the mole working with terrorists. While Nick assures them he'll handle Juliet, Mike, and Roxanne decide to keep the briefcase's existence a secret from Brennan. On their way back, Mike and Roxanne get into a heated argument about their past, where Mike learns that Roxanne was previously married to Nick, fueling his frustration. He storms off to a bar to call his friends about the upcoming wedding, clearly needing a break. The next day, Mike and Roxanne wait at a bridge for Faraday to arrive, but Nick has double-crossed them swapping the real briefcase for a fake and now positioning himself as the ultimate double agent, ready to sell the data to the highest bidder. Meanwhile, the FBI realizes the briefcase is a fake. In a bold move, Roxanne tosses the dummy briefcase, and she and Mike make a daring escape by leaping off the bridge onto a passing ship, successfully evading the FBI and police. With help from Mike's friend at Newark Airport, they quickly secure a cargo flight to Istria, where Nick is headed. During the flight, the tension between Mike and Roxanne heats up, adding a new kind of turbulence to their journey. On the ground, Brennan, framed by Nick, finds himself being interrogated by the FBI. In Istria, Mike and Roxanne pursue Nick and Juliet. Roxanne interrupts Nick as he attempts to close a shady deal with an Iranian terrorist. Nick tries to flee, sparking a wild chase, with Mike in close pursuit. Heroically, Mike retrieves the briefcase and takes on the terrorists in a thrilling fight. After a tense chase, Mike temporarily loses the briefcase, but manages to recover it. In a final confrontation at the docks, Roxanne and Mike corner Nick, just as he's about to hand over the intel to the terrorists. Roxanne takes him down with a well-placed shot and retrieves the briefcase. In the closing scene, Mike arrives at his friend's wedding with Roxanne by his side, and they look genuinely happy together. Brennan expresses his gratitude for their bravery and hints at future missions. As the movie ends, Mike and Roxanne leave the wedding, ready to enjoy some well-deserved time together. If you enjoyed this video, don't be shy to hit the like button, and if you disliked it, hit the dislike button twice, just to be sure. It would be best if you watched the whole movie. Thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe for more videos like this.